In my last video, I looked at using 32 by 8 NeoPixel LED matrices. I did an overview of them, showed how to connect them to Arduino, and write the very basic code to test if all the LEDs of the matrix work fine. I promised the second part of this tutorial within a week, which was to show how to display bitmaps and scroll text. Here it is, but it's running four weeks late. If you want to know why, stick around. Before we jump into this video, let me address the elephant in the room. I've been on YouTube for three years, with over half a million views and thousands of people watching my channel every month. But with all this, my ad revenue barely covers the cost of creating the videos. If only there was a different way you guys could support my channel. <laughs> hint, hint, hint. Even the smallest contribution would mean the world to me and would help me with building my channel. Think of it like you were buying me a beer. Cheers! Enough of this, let's go back to our LED matrices. So let's talk about obstacles I encountered when working on this video. The plan for this tutorial was very simple. It was to use LED matrix control software I have already used in one of my videos. It is a simple program to create bitmap design and convert it to Arduino code. As you can see, the software is a bit vintage. To be able to draw an image, you have to connect Arduino via serial port. The software is not really interfacing with microcontroller, but without that connection, draw mode is disabled. Now using the sliders, we can choose the colors and draw the bitmap. When we are done, we can convert the bitmap design to Arduino code. Here is the exported file. It is hardly the most efficient code representation of the bitmap. If we were working with 32 by 8 matrix, that would result in 256 lines of code. But nevertheless, it works. And that was supposed to be it. Film the footage of a bitmap being displayed on a 32 by 8 LED matrix and another Mario's Ideas video ticked off. Done. So I connected the larger matrix to display that bitmap on it and got this. It took me few minutes before I figure out what was wrong. The 8x8 matrix and 32x8 matrix are not the same when it comes to LED order. On 8x8 you have scan-like order while on a larger matrix it is snake-like order. And in the coding you have to take that order into account, otherwise the results would not be the same. Adjusting the code that came from LED matrix control software would be super confusing and also difficult. I found the new version of LED matrix control software. It was much more sophisticated. It had all the LED orientation options. I think it is now meant to create complex animation for matrices but also for LED cubes. I could not find any documentation for this and the draw option is disabled here and even connecting to Arduino did not enable it. Anyway, it would seem that using this software for a simple bitmap creation would be like killing a fly with a rocket launcher. So the LED matrix control software was not fit for purpose here. I decided to regroup and find a solution to deliver the video I promised you. I was not going to write my own application. I would rather use the tools I have at my disposal, like Microsoft Excel. So here is the Excel spreadsheet that I created that should allow us to generate code for bitmap design. It consists of two sheets. In the first one we define the bitmap that we want to display. Here we provide the name of the table that would store the bitmap, the data type that we would be using, as well as matrix dimensions. Then we also can define colors that will be used to create the bitmap. We provide the index of each color and corresponding CRGB codes. For now, let's leave color values blank. To make the process user-friendly, I have added conditional formatting in the matrix. You are filling in the cell with a color by typing appropriate color index into that cell. If I open the conditional formatting, you would see all the currently existing rules. You can at any point change existing rules or add new ones if you need more colors. I am using CRGB data type to represent colors. 
We may however use different color schemes as well. I will cover this later in this video. And here is the 32 by 8 matrix in which we can work on our design. In the code sheet, for now, we do not see much. A bunch of brackets and nothing more. Ok, so let's test this thing. We'll draw a different bitmap this time. Let's draw a snake. I will fill in the table name. I will populate this table with objects of CRGB type. To start, let's just work with 8x8 eight eight matrix. Time to draw. I am actually missing one color. Let's add it. To do it, we have to add one more rule in conditional formatting. 8 would be the index of the new color, so each time we enter 8 into the formatted cell, it will be filled in with this new color. When we save this rule, we need to be sure that we also copy this formatting to the index column of the color table. Now we can finish the design. Let's double check the code sheet. We are starting to see some data being populated, like table name and data type. There are also some commas, but the color definitions are missing, and for a good reason, we have not yet populated them in a color table. Let's do it now. Starting with the easiest one, black. And immediately you begin to see code changes. Then we add white, and then add rest of the colors. Now the code is fully populated. Let's look at the formulas used in the code sheet. For data type, table name, and dimensions, we reference appropriate cells from matrix sheet. For the table cells, we take corresponding matrix cell, only if the cell is not blank, we then take the value read from this cell, which is the index of the color, and look for that index in the color table, and if that index is found, we return the matching color CRGB value. Simple as that. Now that our code is generated, I can copy-paste the code sheet into the notepad. The text is a bit all over the place, but if we find and remove all tab signs in that text file, it starts looking more manageable. We can now copy-paste the result into the Arduino sketch and run it to see if our bitmap would be properly displayed on the matrix. Let's look at the code now. Each program we'll write today will have the same common block of code. This is where we declare fast LED library, specify number of LEDs, data pin to which matrix is connected, and so on. These lines of code were explained in the first part of this tutorial. Then we need the bitmap table we have just generated. In loop function, we have two nested for loops which go through that table and rewrite its content into the LEDs table that is linked to the LED matrix. Since snake table has two dimensions and LEDs table just one, we need to calculate the corresponding position in LEDs table for each pixel. Normally, we would execute fast LED show command at the end of the process, so all LEDs of the bitmap would lit at once. I moved it into the nested for loop and added a slight delay so we can observe how the bitmap is drawn pixel by pixel. Let's run it on 8x8 matrix first to see if the code works. Excellent. Now let's run this code on 32x8 matrix. The bitmap should be messed up as we have not yet addressed our LED layout problem. And it is messed up big time. So we need the different behavior when processing even and odd columns of the snake table. We recognize if the column is odd or even by extracting the least significant bit of the column number. We use logical AND function to do this. If the bit is 1, the column is odd, and if it is not, it is even. For odd columns, we process cells in the reverse order. For even columns, we process cells just like we did in the previous example. Let's run the code. And voila! The bitmap is displaying correctly. By now, you're probably wondering, what is this graphic in the spreadsheet showing rainbow color scheme? I mentioned to you that we do not have to necessarily stick to RGB color scheme. We can, for instance, use HSV color scheme, which is exactly what that graphic shows. 
It provides you with only 256 colors, but they are all nicely refined and saturated colors. If you are not familiar with RGB and HSV color schemes, maybe you want to check this video of mine that covers that topic. And you can save an HSV color, assuming that you would display it at full brightness and saturation with only one byte, and not with three, like in case of CRGB. So the table will be three times smaller in size. And the size matters sometimes. Let's use the whole area of the matrix and write a text and use HSV color scheme. Please note that white and black colors are not included in HSV color scheme. In this example I need black for LEDs which would be turned off. I will use zero to represent black, where zero normally represents red color in HSV color scheme. I will need to address it from within the code so it is displayed properly. Let's get rid of RGB color reference. Change the data type and matrix dimensions. Now I am writing the text using available color numbers. Obviously in this case the colors you see are not going to be the colors displayed on the matrix. When the text is finished I am assigning for each color index a color from HSV color range, so from 0 to 256 with 0 being off limits. Last thing we need to do is change the table name. So here is our generated table definition. We follow the same steps. Copy paste to notepad, replace tabs and copy paste the result to Arduino code. Important thing, we need to change the declared number of LEDs. It will be 256 now. Next comes the Arduino table. In loop function we have the same nested for loop with the only difference that we are processing 32 columns now. Here we also process table cells differently depending whether they are in odd or even columns. There is however one extra condition. If the color we read is zero we populate RGB value representing black. Otherwise we populate the color represented by HSV code we have just read. Again I put fast LED and small delay into the for loop so we can see how the content of Arduino table is transferred to LEDs table. We can use Excel tool for creating monochrome tables as well. Such tables you can even use with one color dot matrixes controlled by max 7219 module. In this case you could create additional sheet where each LED is represented by a bit and not a byte, so the table would be even smaller. So I will change the text to use just two color indexes, zero for pixel to be turned off and two for pixel to be turned on. So the values for those two indexes would be zero and one. This is our generator table. Let's build a code around it. Same for loop and set of actions for even and odd columns. For even ones, when the red cell is 1, we set HSV code 0, which is red, otherwise no action. For odd columns, same deal, but pixels are processed in reverse order. If you want to spice up this text with random colors, we can do a quick change to code. Instead of sending red color represented by 0, let's generate the number from 0 to 256 for each pixel. How about this? Looks cool, right? So how do you like my tool? Is it basic? Absolutely. But does it work though? Hell yeah! You can flex it to the exact needs of your project. If you have LED matrix with a slightly different LED layout, all you have to do is add another sheet in which cell mappings in the generated code are appropriately adjusted. And what do you know? What was meant to be a single video about LED matrices is now the series of two videos. And I'm not done yet. The third part of this tutorial is going to cover scrolling the content on this 32 by 8 LED matrix. Let's hope there will be no hurdles this time and I can publish this video within the next two weeks. For those who want to try how my spreadsheet works, it is available to download on my Patreon website. I also included STL files for printing the diffusion panels for both 8x8 and 32x8 LED matrices. If you like this content, liking this video and subscribing to my channel goes without saying. I'll see you next week.